You're a late bloomer. You're undrafted. You have no idea what to do with hockey. Well, today's video is going to help you. For mom and dad, your kid might be that late bloomer. Let's start by what a late bloomer is. 12 year old, 13 year old is not a late bloomer. He's still a child. Let him have fun playing the game. When you get to the 16s, 17s, 18s, I wouldn't call it a late bloomer, but they're getting there. They're, the 18s for sure. The 16s might still be on the edge of the late bloomers, but 17s, 18s, maybe. Junior hockey, for sure you're a late bloomer. Regardless, that's the age group it starts at. But Below that, just let them have fun, let them train, they'll figure it out. Now, what's considered a late bloomer? You didn't grow till then, you know, you're 110 pounds until you're 18 years old. Never actually really trained with a skills coach or went to the gym, didn't realize you love the game of hockey and want to play at the next level. Something clicked in your head and you figured out how to shoot a puck to hit the net, not the soccer net, the hockey net. You decided you really care about the game, you want to put in the work, you want to get to the next level. Is it too late? No. I myself was cut every year from AAA until I was 16 years old. At 16, I made it as a bench Warmer. I played 10 games at a 75. So I didn't really make the team. I was there to sit down and fill water bottles. 17, I played AAA and I dominated. That one year changed everything. Got drafted major junior, played tier two junior hockey. And tier two, I lit it up. And that's what everything advanced. Until then, you can consider me a late bloomer. I was a short, fat kid who didn't know how to train. And I'm not ashamed to say that. Now, go back into what I was saying about how between 16 and 17, everything changed. Well, I got a glimpse of what it took to play there. First of all, I always loved hockey. I always wanted to play as high as possible. Just didn't know how to do it properly. Now, when I kind of figured it out, I went hard harder than anybody ever had. I was a 16 year old kid. I used to wake up at 5 a.m., go to the gym from 6 to 7.30. 7.30, get my car, I'd leave. I had to work from 8 to 4. 4 o'clock when I get off, I either had an ice session from 5 to 6, or I had another gym session. When that was over, I went home. If I had ice that day, I studied the film from the ice session. If I did not have ice that day, I worked on my hand-eye coordination. Mom and dad, I'm sorry for what I did to your walls. If I was tired, picked up a book and I read. Why did I read? Because mental toughness, mental training is a huge part of getting to the next level. Whether you're a full a goalie a defenseman it doesn't matter it's a huge part of getting to the next level and sticking there i did this every day from the day the season ended until the day it was tryouts again why because i wanted to be there i wanted to walk in prove a point and shut everybody up i wanted to make sure that when i put on that jersey people knew who i was when we played another team i was part of the scouting report not just a number that sat on the bench. I was part of the scouting report. You needed to know what to do to beat me. That was the type of work I was willing to put in to go from a bubble AAA, more of a double A guy, to the AAA guy, the guy that everybody wanted. And was I that guy by the end of the season? Probably not, but I was damn sure closer to that guy than I was the double A guy. And this goes for the same for all of you out there. If you're not ready to play yet, that's okay. Put in the work, put your head down, put in the work. Your friends can wait. The parties, they're a waste of time. You want to do this, you either go all in or you don't go at all. Nowadays, the training resources are above and beyond what I had. If you're not putting in that work, there's kids taking three, four, five steps ahead of you in a couple weeks. Now, on the other hand, if you just figured out how to shoot a puck, you finally figured out that you needed to hold a hockey stick and not a broomstick when you got on the ice. You finally figured out how to hit somebody instead of crawling in the corner and saying, just don't hit me. Work on it all summer. Go see the skills coach. At home, shoot 500 pucks a day, 600 pucks a day. Make sure that once you get to tryouts, that skill that you figured out how to use that changed you as a hockey player is above and beyond what anybody ever expected and when you get the tryouts make sure you show it if you grew you gained weight and you learned how to hit that first exhibition game put a kid over the boards make sure that when he's skating down the ice and he puts his head down you take him out if you learned how to shoot when you get in the offensive zone and you get that puck it better go in you can't miss by 10 feet you can't shoot it at the goalie's chest you can't hit the defenseman in front of you it's got to go in the net I want to make something very clear. If you identify, and I hate that word, as a skill guy, as a point guy, as a goal scorer, you better be filling that net more than your mom fills the fridge after she goes grocery shopping. Okay? That thing's got to be stuffed. You have to finish with goal after goal after goal after goal and assists. Late bloomers happen every year. At tryouts, they come out every single year. There's always one or two kids that nobody has no idea who they are, and by the end of camp, coach is drooling over them. They figured it out over the summer. They finally gained some confidence. There's a couple clients of mine that are unbelievable hockey players. They have all the tools to be unbelievable, but between their two ears, they don't believe in themselves. They're not confident. They're not consistent with it. And I promise you, when they figured it out, and one of them figured it out this summer, when they show up to camp, people will know who they are. People are gonna watch them. You might figure it out at 16, at 17, at 18, at 19, even at 20. But when you do, there's no holding back. Not a single second, not a single minute, there is no holding back. You are the underdog and you better use it to your advantage. When I was playing junior hockey, there was a goalie playing in the OJHL. This guy had been there for five years and for f his first four, he was mediocre is an understatement. Could not win back-to-back -back games. Could not have back-to-back -back good performances. Not incredible, good. At 20 years old, 
gold when I tell you he figured it out. If you scored on this man, keep the puck. The team didn't change. They were still a very mediocre team. They were still way below 500. But when you're averaging 45 shots against the game and you have a 920 something save percent average, you did your damn job. You gave your team more than a chance to win and they failed. So his first four years of juniors, nobody talked to him. Not even NCAA Division 3s. Nobody wanted to touch him. When he finished his 20 year old season, now we're talking end of March, he had some Division 3s talking to him. He went to one showcase in July. At the end of July, we're talking three weeks before you go back to school, he got a Division 1 full scholarship and went to a Division 1 school. Now in college, it's a different story you're with the best of the best you're with NHL draft picks I think he might have started 10 games in college hockey in four years however he still got a full ride to a division one college hockey school based on the last six months of his five-year junior career talk about a late bloomer he figured it out mentally because he knew how to play goalie there's a reason he was in the OJ at 16 years old he knew how to stop a puck but mentally he wasn't ready for it and he figured it out to the last last possible minute and it worked out for him now you might say that's all that's a Cinderella story that doesn't happen to everybody it doesn't happen to anybody and you're probably right but it's a great example to show you that once you do figure it out, you can get where you want to go. Coaches are always looking. And if there is a needle in a haystack, they will find it. There's a reason they're coaching college hockey. They are great at what they do. So if you're a late bloomer, keep pushing. If you're not there yet, but mentally you know you should be. Inside of you, something says you're a hockey player. You're meant to play at the next level. Your weight will come. Your size will come. Unless mom and dad are short, I'm sorry, we can't fix that. You can work around it. Your shot, you're not scoring as much. Go shoot 600 pucks a day. A thousand pucks a day. Don't break mom and dad's windows or, or walls or anything. As a goalie, you're struggling to be consistent. Go buy 10 books, finish them in a month. You may think I'm crazy. Oh, 300 pages a book. How do you do 10 books in a month? If you really want to be that guy, if you really want to be that good, you'll do it. You'll figure it out. You'll drop all the other distractions and you'll do it. Get to the gym early. Make sure that before the workout, you're spending 25, 30 minutes stretching, warming up so you can have the best possible workout. And then after workout, you're doing a proper cool down so that you're good to do it again the next day and the day after and the day after until it's time for camp. And when you get to camp, and I cannot emphasize this enough, there is no room for errors in camp, especially as a goalie. Forwards and def defensemen, you might have a little bit of room, but not much. You have three, maybe four days to absolutely annihilate everybody on that ice. Mediocrity is not enough. Being good is not enough. Being really good is not enough. You understand that half the team is signed before camp. There might be five spots left at camp. So you need to be a top five player. You want to be safe? You need to be a top three player. And not by, not that everybody's close and you're top three of the close. You need to be the best out there. Show that you were in the gym all summer working on your skate and now you're 10 times faster and nobody can touch you end to end show that when you get into the corner that kid ain't coming out with the puck he's either on his floor on the floor not getting up or there's nowhere near him trying to control that puck you got in you took it you left there was no battle you have a shot snipe every single goalie on that ice i cannot emphasize that enough training camp is not the same as it used to be when i went to camp only the best were there there was 35 maybe 40 guys for a 22 23 man roster now there's 200 guys at main camp things have changed it's unfortunate but things have changed you need to stand out it's hard to stand out in 200 guys it really is so figure it out make sure that they have no choice but to look at you being really good is not enough nowadays with the th the way things are ran with the way camps are ran with the way recruitment is done it's not enough and i i hate to say that to you but welcome to the new generation of hockey this is the future you want this is the path you've chosen put your head down and get to work because like i said you could be 16 be a top guy by 18 you might not be anymore you could be 16 and be a bubble double a guy and at 19 years old you might be the best junior a, junior a hockey player in the country. You never know. The only way to know for sure is work your butt off. And when the time comes, we'll see what happens. You can't control the future. You can control what you do today. Thank you guys for watching another AHA video. For you young players, I hope I sparked something in you because this is the truth about the hockey world nowadays. Mom and dad, if you guys like this content, there's another video here or here. Click the one that interests you most.